So yes, now let's look at question two. So question two says, use Taylor polynomials to show that for large wavelengths, Planck's law gives approximately the same values as the rayleigh beans law. So we have uh, this law, that's Planck's law, and we have um, rayleigh Jeans law over here. And we're going to see that uh, or show that this is approximately equal to this at large uh, wavelengths. So it keeps going. Scroll down here. So we're asked to use Taylor polynomials. So we can approximate Planck's law by expanding the exponential function using a Taylor polynomial. So yes, that's the, the complicated part of the uh, function is that e to the, um, see what it was. So we have e to the hc divided by lambda kt. So we could replace this complicated function with a Taylor polynomial, which is just basic uh, algebra, but uh, infinite series form. Oh, scrolling back here. So uh, first, a quick recap on Taylor series from my earlier video. So here's the, the hive notes of it. So theorem of power series, uh, uh, representation or expansion at A, that is if we just have a series like this, if f of x equals to uh, constant times it by x minus a, and then it's a power. And the r is the radius of, of convergence, so x minus r. And, and yeah, this infinite series converges for this radius of convergence. So for example, if this is the a, then the, then the Radius would be up to r here, plus and minus, and the endpoints you have to decide on your own, but this is just be between it, is, uh, it converges. Then its coefficients are given by this formula, cn equals to fn, uh, f nth derivative uh, at a divided by n factorial. And then that's the, yeah, that is how we get a yeah, Taylor series. So that's a Taylor series over there, and then you can expand it out, it looks like this. So we plug these inside, so this can be f of a plus uh, the first derivative of a divided by one factorial times x minus a to the power of one, and the second derivative, and there's just twos and there's threes, and so on. And then, and then here's a table here, which I went over in my earlier video of um, yeah, uh, in my earlier video and videos uh, going over the Taylor expansion. So for e to the x, you can expand it out because remember you're just using the derivatives and um, plug that inside. You're going to get this this formula. So one plus this is going to be x to the power of n divided by n factorial, or 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x3 to the power divided by 3 factorial. And this is uh, the radius of convergence is r is equal to infinity. So in other words, it converges for all values of, yeah, yeah, converges for all values of x. So yeah, so that's uh, very interesting stuff. So from the table above, we could use the following Taylor series, which is this e to the x over there. So let's just write this one down. So we could write e to the x and just uh, write it over here. That's the summation in, uh, from like that. Yes, yeah, so summation from i or uh, what is this called? n from n equals 0 up to this is x to the n divided by n factorial. Now this equals 2. Then we plug in 0 inside. Uh, this is going to be yeah, x to the 0 is just 1 by definition. And then 0 factorial is 1 by definition as well. So this is going to be 1. The next one is going to be. Uh, when you plug in a 1 in there, so x divided by 1 factorial, then plus x2 divided by 2 factorial, then plus x3 divided by 3 factorial, dot, 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 and radius of convergence is r equals infinity, so for all values of x, it converges. All right, so thus we have, let's just put in Planck's law, so Planck's law, f of lambda is equal to, let's just remember what we had, 8 pi hc, then lambda to power negative 5. And then the bottom is going to be, well, e to the hc divided by lambda k capital T, like that. And then we're going to subtract this by 1. And now what we'll do is we're going to approximate the exponential function with this Taylor series. And what we'll do there is, well, then we're going to call this entire thing over here. That's going to be our x. So that's our x. So this this means now, well, this equals 2 e to the, or actually that's the bottom. So we're getting rid of that. So we're going to write this as, let's see how long this is going to be. Let's just make a giant one like that. This is going to be 8 pi hc negative 5. And then plug this, uh, this e to the x inside. So that's going to be, we'll put a big giant uh, bracket, put a bracket like that. It's going to be 1 plus now x the so x divided by one factorial is just x that's going to be just well x over this is going to be hc lambda kt and uh yeah remember this is just our x 
x like that. And now the next one's going to be plus, this is going to be x squared, so, and then divided by 2 factorial. So let's put the 2 factorial out, outside. So 1 over 2 factorial, <clears throat> and then we're going to have a bracket, and this is going to be our x. This is our hc over lambda kt, and then squared. And the next one's going to be plus 1 over 3 factorial, and this is going to be hc over lambda kt. And this is going to be, let's write this neater, cubed. All right, so then, yeah, we have that. And then it basically goes on to infinity, so we go plus dot, 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 and then put a bracket, and then uh, minus 1, part of the equation over here. So if we replace it with that giant Taylor series, let's just move it like this. And uh, yeah, so now since we're approximately uh, trying to show, um, so we're, we're trying to show that it, it, we are basically trying to approximate with the Taylor series, instead of going to infinity, so let's go back to what it says, for large wavelengths uh, show that it approximately is the same as the rayleigh Jeans law. So what we'll do is, well, we'll notice that uh, outside of the first term, so there's no squared here, but now you're squaring the wavelength. So let's say this wavelength is, is large, then if you're going to square it, that's just double as large. Then you, then you cube it, now you're doing, now you're going uh, pretty much, uh, much, much larger. And, and you also have these uh, factorials over there. So these are going to be, the bottom's going to be very, very, very large. And then, uh, so what that means is, yeah, so for large wavelengths, and you also have these factorials, uh, th this over here is going to be approximately small. So this is small as lambda is uh, large. So as it goes to infinity, it's uh, just getting larger. Yeah, this is getting uh, larger. I mean, I mean uh, this, uh, this, this whole thing just goes to uh, smaller and smaller as this lambda gets larger and larger. Yeah, because remember, hc are constant, so they're not changing. But so if you increase uh, k, so as, as you get more and more, uh, as you get larger, and I mean, uh, increase uh, lambda as you get larger and larger, all you're doing is making these ne uh, later terms smaller and smaller. Yeah, so if we approximate that by only looking at the first term, so what that means is, well, this will equal to, so we're going to only take this first term, so the, or uh, the, these first, this first non-zero term there, or non-trivial uh, term. So we're just going to cut off from here. Approximate. Let's go approximate from here. Approximate. So we're going to approximate here. So this is going to equal to this, uh, the center of this equals to now, or roughly equals to uh, 8 pi hc lambda to the power of negative 5 over, and we're going to have a 1 plus hc lambda kt. And we also have this negative 1 there. Then this cancels. This cancels. This equals to 8 pi hc lambda or actually uh, before we even do that we have the uh we have to cancel out some stuff so we cancel out these uh, negative ones i'm just going to put this uh, actually like this put the bracket just to show that it's it's uh this bracket there and then now once we cancel those out now we can divide this out so this this h cancels with this c cancels with this and then what else do we have this cancels yeah this this lambda cancels with one of these so it becomes a four so what that means is this becomes 8 pi, and uh, where, yeah, this one here, so 8 pi, this is a divided by k there. So this is a, uh, this numerator divided by denominator where the denominator has the denominator of k, so that k gets flipped upside down, as well as this t, as, so we just flip it all the way up. It's going to be kt. And this is uh, lambda to the power of 4, that just goes downwards. So that's lambda of positive 4. At the bottom, and this is just Rayleigh Jeans law, and we can check mark this, and you could actually uh, scroll up there. So eight pi kt divided by lambda four, and scroll up to the uh, Rayleigh Jeans law. So eight pi eight pi kt divided by lambda four. So that's exactly Rayleigh Jeans law. Just fascinating stuff. Let's keep going further now. So yeah, so going further, yeah, this is exactly Rayleigh Jeans law. So thus, since uh, lambda is large and the, and the terms of the Taylor series are very small compared to the first non-zero term, approximating Planck's law using the using just the first Taylor polynomial T one 
or the first uh, non-zero uh, or trivial term, uh, yields Rayleigh Jeans law. So I just put the, I just uh, typed up what I just said and did. So anyways, yes, yeah, so that is a question, the solution to question two.